Let's look at how scatter plots are used to analyze two quantitative variables. A scatter plot is just a set of points plotted on a standard graph here. You'll notice on this graph that we are comparing education level and income of a bunch of different individuals. And what we're trying to do is identify a pattern. You'll notice that a lot of the data seems to fit some kind of general upward trend here, but there are clearly some outliers that are a little bit out there. So any point that's far away from the general pattern, we're going to consider an outlier. We're going to call that an outlier. Any one of these points, though, just to take a deeper look, represents a single individual. In this case, it's a study of people, so a single person is represented by each dot on this graph. So every one of these dots is going to have uh, two questions, two answers associated with it. A level of education, years of education, and that's going to drop down to the x-axis, and then a uh, income level and that's going to go over to the y-axis. So if you look at that one point it has a value down here from the education level and a value here from the income. So let's pull those off here. We have two variables, it's education level and income and the first thing that we need to decide is which one is likely the cause and which one is likely the effect. Which one causes the other one to happen. And although we'll talk more in depth about uh, causation in just a moment, first let's just imagine that education causes you to make more money. The more years you spend in school, that will cause you to make more money. It doesn't make quite as much sense that making more money would cause you to have more education, although if it was parental income and, and whatnot, that could clearly have an effect. So let's assume that education here is the cause, income is the effect. And when we make that assumption, we would call education the explanatory variable, also known as the independent variable. This is the variable that causes the other one to change, and we plot it on the x-axis. So when we plot it down here, what we're making a statement is, the statement we're making is that education causes income to change. The more education we have in this case, we're saying there's a positive trend. The more education you have, the more income you have. Up here, income would then be called the response variable or the dependent variable. It's the variable that reacts to the explanatory or depends on this explanatory variable. And we put that on the y-axis. The more years of education you have, this income is going to depend on that years of education to determine how much money someone could potentially make. And as you'll notice here, not all data fits a perfectly linear pattern. It doesn't mean that if you go to school this many years, you will make exactly this much money. What it does say is that there's a general pattern that people who spend more time in school tend to make more money. Let's talk about association and correlation in a scatter plot. What we're looking for is the general pattern here. Association here refers to how much the data forms a pattern. So if you have strong association, you have a clear pattern. If you have weak association, you do not form a pattern. Correlation, we'll talk about that in just a moment. So this graph here has a very strong association. These points line up to be an almost perfect U-shape or perfect parabola. So the association would be very strong. and We would say it's a parabolic shape if you wanted to use that term. Or if you were just using a simpler term, you might call it a U-shaped graph. The correlation, on the other hand, refers to how linear it is, how well the data forms a straight line. This data here, if it was just these first three or four points, would form a pretty pretty good line. But when you have all these points in there, your line 
is probably going to look something like this, which doesn't fit the data almost at all. So the correlation would be very poor. It would be very weak correlation. The second example is an example where there is a little bit of both. You have a strong association because these points do form a clear pattern. And that clear pattern happens to be linear. Now, when you have a very strong linear pattern, that means you're also going to have strong correlation. Because all that correlation is, is how much of a linear pattern you form. This graph down here, the data points don't really uh, have much of a pattern at all, so it would be weak association. And if there's no pattern, there's definitely no linear pattern, so it would be weak correlation. This last one has a very strong association. There's a very clear pattern being formed here. And if any of you recognize this type of graph, this would be a logarithmic graph or a logarithmic pattern. Um, sometimes we'll call that an exponential pattern because of the fact that logarithms and exponents or in exponential functions are the inverse of each other, they are related. So we could consider this exponential or logarithmic, depending on our point of view. And that has a strong association. And if we tried to make this a line, we would be able to form a somewhat straight line, but uh, not particularly good. So we would say probably maybe a moderate correlation on this graph.